Welcome back, Hauziki here. Today I proved P equals NP in Minecraft. For those who don't know, P equals NP is a famous unsolved problem in computer science. If you can prove that P equals NP, or even that it doesn't, you win big. There's a $1 million cash prize, you basically cure cancer, bank encryptions become worthless, and I'd finally be famous for something big enough to overshadow what I did through. Incident. Solving P equals NP is a huge deal. But why is that? What does P equals NP even mean? The whole idea is, is a problem easy to solve just because it's easy to verify? Let me press this button and we can see an example. Say I gave you a list of five numbers and asked you to tell me what the largest number in that list was. All you have to do is run through the entire list once and remember what the biggest number you found so far is. Having only looked at one number, two is the biggest so far. Now two is bigger than one, so we keep two. Five is bigger than two, so we keep five. Five is bigger than three, so we keep five. Five is bigger than four, we keep five. Boom, we just found the biggest number in the list using only five checks. A similar but different problem is checking that we found the correct answer. To do so, we scan through the list and make sure none of the numbers are larger than five. Boom, 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 done. Again in five checks. This is one of the problems that we know are easy to solve because when I add 10 more numbers to the list, the amount of checks we have to do only increases by 10. And it's an easy solution for me to validate because, again, you just have to scan through each item once. But not all problems stay this easy to solve as the size of the input increases. If I told you to sort the entire list instead of just finding the largest value, you might try to find the smallest number, take it out of the list, and then add it to a new list. Repeat that and you'll add 2 to the new list. Repeat that again, you'll add 3. Again, 4. Again, 5. At the end, you'll have a sorted list. That'll totally work, but if your logic looks like that, then the amount of work you end up doing scales up way faster than before. Instead of doing one check per item in the list, you end up doing that many checks squared. We run through each item once for each item. So as you add more items, the amount of work we have to do increases more rapidly than if we just had to find the highest or lowest number. But for me to check your solution, to see if you sorted properly, I still only need to run through your solution one time to make sure the numbers are always increasing. So it's easy to validate, but slightly harder to solve. That said, when n is the size of your input, doing n squared checks isn't really too bad for most things. The real problems come when the amount of work you have to do is 2 to the n, which is exponential, or worse, n factorial, which is... factorial. There are a lot of problems that are difficult to solve, meaning that they're very slow. What's the solution to this Sudoku puzzle? What's the best move to make in chess right now? What's the path that an Amazon delivery driver should take if they want to minimize the amount of traveling they do while also making sure they hit all their stops? All of these are classified as difficult problems because the amount of work that it takes to solve them scales very fast with the size of their input. But for some of these problems, like the Sudoku puzzle, even though it's difficult to solve, it's still very easy to check if a solution is correct. Here's a diagram I made. This inner circle represents every problem that's easy to solve. I guess these are technically ovals, but anyway. This outer circle represents every problem that's easy to verify. And outside the circle means it's slow to solve and slow to verify. Every now and then, some genius figures out a clever way to solve a problem that we thought was difficult, and it gets moved into the easy to solve circle. And then another one gets moved in. And another one. And the question is, will that ever stop happening? Or can we eventually find an easy way to solve every problem that we know is easy to verify? That's what P equals NP is all about. The P equals NP question asks, if a problem is easy to verify, is that the same as being easy to solve? The inner circle represents P, and the outer circle represents NP. With enough clever people, will these two circles become the same circle? As it turns out, the answer is yes. I've done it, as you can see in a second. You'll see if I just press this button, these two circles become one, which means P equals NP. Now, how this works is actually pretty simple, and if we go into spectator mode, you can see that it's all done using armor stands. Solving P equals NP is a pretty huge deal, and I'm pretty proud of this. But yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. No, that's not how it works. You just scaled up an ellipse. You didn't prove anything. That's about it. Thanks for watching.